Hello, I'm Jonathan Kidd. This is my uh, video blog, my vlog of Chelsea's 2009-2010 season and uh, I've been to the bridge to see Chelsea play Cardiff uh, in the FA Cup 5th round, 13th of February. The Blues versus the Bluebirds. So, Ashley Cole's injury was far worse than was thought when he limped off at Goodison Park on Wednesday when we were shite and he has in fact broken his ankle just when he was playing the best football of his career. He was too good for Walcott last week, was looking formidable going forward and immense in defence and scoring great goals. He is one of England's true world-class players and will be out for three months, which will mean he'll probably miss nearly all the rest of the season and very likely the World Cup. Fuck! Now, this now spookily and dramatically opens the door for Wayne Bridge. Bridgie, the victim of the JT melodrama, who despite having scored a fucking great goal at the Highbury Chateau when he played for us and was always a trier, is not a patch on Ash, but is now the man in possession. And of course he will now be in the same team as JT. Oh, how the plot thickens and spits and soaks up all the gravy and wears a sign that says tasty. The tabloids, meanwhile, see all Chelsea players as fair game to be outed in every possible sexual position and situation they've allowed themselves to be allegedly discovered in. Ash, our injured Ash, is the most recent. He allegedly took pictures of himself naked, as you do. I'm constantly taking pictures of my, my Tadger on my phone, allegedly. Sorry, I mean, I constantly take pictures of my daughter, not Tadger. See how easy it is to make a mistake. Where was it? Oh yes, Ash. And someone he lent the phone to sent these naked pictures. Actually, how do you take pictures of yourself naked with the phone? Surely naked just means pictures of his knob. Anyway, someone sent these pictures of his penis to a topless model, allegedly. Then allegedly there were several dogs and a llama involved and a dwarf and Bill Clinton. Then someone sent a picture of a bare ass. Someone said it was Wayne Rooney's and Wayne Bridges and Rio Ferdinand was in the background. And who cares for fuck's sake? Meanwhile, JT is buggered off to Dubai to attempt to resuscitate his floundering marriage where he's, his wife is with the kids and allegedly he's paid off Veronica for £750,000 and that's why she sold her story to no one. What's this to do with football, I hear you ask? Naff all! Naff all! I reply squeakily. Mind you, I can't, I can't talk because at 12 o'clock when the game today started I was recovering from a bacchanalian orgy in queue and a big black ladyboy was licking cream off my nipples in a splashing incident. What I meant to say was that, in fact, I was waking up at home as I thought it was a three o'clock kickoff, And as it wasn't on UK TV, it was, in fact, online, on FA TV, in actual fact. I presumed that three was the usual kickoff time. And the baby, my gorgeous Georgia, had been up three times in the night. She's growing two new teeth with a gap, actually, in the front. This causes huge smelly diary and awful stingy nappy rash and dreadful whinginess. She had all that and was very miserable, kept waking up. Anyway, I was up three times with Henrietta, the girlfriend. In fact, all I do is stand over her half asleep, looming over her, making silly faces having a, a rag cat and dog fight. <laughs> she has these floppy, soft, cuddly animals, you see, to distract her as Henry changes the nappy, or nut nap, as we rather charmingly call it, as it can smell a bit nutty. But then I was up at 7.30 and sat with Georgia while Henry got a few more Zs in upstairs, and I went back to bed at 9, asking Henry to wake me at 11. I was still slightly unsure when the game was, and with an almost predictable inkling that something was wrong, looked at all the TV schedules to see if we were on. The pro I didn't have a programme with me. Anyway, at 12, Henry woke me and said she'd let me She'd actually let me sleep for another hour. I wandered downstairs, had a cuppa, a bit of toast, ran a bath, got in it. I need to hear someone on Football Focus say on the telly downstairs, the score was now 1-1. Michael Chopra just scored for Cardiff, that it was a real cup tie, as Cardiff were giving as good as they were getting. Fuck! I exited the bath like a greased monkey was dressed in a nanosecond, out of there, cycled as if I was tempted to travel back in time, which I was, and got there <laughs> just after Sturridge had scored. What I thought was the second goal, but was in fact the third. I saw Kalu on for a dreadful Joe Cole, apparently, head an excellent fourth. The drog had scored the first after two minutes, and there was naturally a lot of jolly banter about where I'd been, whether I'd actually like to hang about in the stands for another hour when the game had finished, just to get my money's worth. <laughs> the great ex-Chelsea Johnny Hollins was sitting behind me. Incidentally, I asked him whether he was an Arsenal fan. That's the rumour, as he never gets up when Chelsea score. And he said he only didn't get up because his knees had gone. I didn't believe him. And a strange belligerent fat bloke with a very low brow. You know, his eyebrows and his hairline are almost meeting. Not a good sign, I've been told. Sitting to my right, as unamusingly told me to sit down as you're blocking my view. Get some very odd people at football matches. This bloke is always having a go at our players. He calls Balak that stupid German, which is a mite unfair, as he's... Looking a bit good for us, uh, other than against Everton, where other than Maluda, everyone all played like dicks. But this bloke is typical, really. There's always someone who sits near you rather than get behind the team as a go at everyone. I remember going to see us play at Portsmouth and a kindly looking old chap called every Chelsea player a uh, C-U-N-T, non-stop. And then his wife joined him with it. 
with him. Mind you, I hated Sean Wright Phillips with a vengeance. But rightly so, because he was fucking useless. He used to reduce me to a wobbly jelly of frustration. But rather than abuse him, I would just make terrible noises of frustration and impotence until steam came out of my ears and I shat myself. Not so this bloke behind me. Oh, he's a sour puss. Anyway, Joe Cole is a tar target for his bitter tongue as well. Now, I would never attack Joe because he's been such a star. But it's just not working at the moment. But he doesn't care. You're fucking useless, you're cold, he goes once again. Joe was not good. Apparently, I'm only saying what I was told. I didn't see the first half, remember, and that's as long as he lasted as I was lying in my bath scrubbing myself at the time after the 16-hour orgy. Sorry, after I'd been asleep because of the baby's diarrhoea. Because Joe was subbed at half-time. But apparently there was one dreadful moment where Joe did a large number of inappropriate Ronaldo-type comedy stepovers, and the Cardiff winger Whittingham ignored the meaningless showboating, just took the ball off him. And several occasions when Joe attempted to dribble past three players and didn't and hasn't got a clue, came on in his stead and actually played quite well. I can't believe I'm saying this. Providing the first pass of the neat triangle for DDA to sweep through for Balak's chip over the goalie on 52. And of course, his own immaculate header. And his was the first pass to DDA when the ball ricocheted through to Sturridge on 68 minutes. That was when I arrived, the 68th. As on the telly in the bar, I saw Sturridge wheeling away, having scored as I was going to my seat. The drug was apparently everywhere, unlike during the week, where it looked as if he actually hadn't bothered to turn up. Once again, we looked vulnerable to set pieces. Free kicks and corners had made Alex and Carvalho look decidedly ordinary. And Ferreira had looked a bit iffy as well, but other than that, and Chopra's goal from across, we'd actually looked our usual sweet passing selves. I arrived breathless with burning thighs and a prodigious wheeze having cycled like a madman. On arrival I noticed in the shed end where the 6,000 Welshmen were, there were multitudes of flags. I counted nine bearing the Welsh dragon and one sign saying 1JT, that being some Welsh bloke called Jack Thomas. As we were three miles up when I came, naturally the singing had become offensive. Uh, where were you when you were shit? The strange rent boys. Why? Your support is fucking shit. Shall we sing a song for you? I thought we were, as I could hear several carefrees and spots. But their pièce de résistance was the refra refrain about JT, which I, I couldn't quite make out. It was one of, he's shagging all the time. Lynn sitting next to me thought it was that one. I thought it was the slightly profound and clever, he's shagging all of us. David behind me and to my left said it was ticks it up the arse but that sounded very far-fetched to me as no one had ever talked about him being that way inclined it was opening an enormous tin of worms all I know is that we replied with and now you're gonna believe us you're shagging all the sheep followed by a passionate England England two other things the video screen to our right still isn't working you'd think that with Samsung as our sponsor we'd have that repaired in a flash wouldn't you perhaps the parts have to come from Japan secondly the Cardiff goalie was wearing a ridiculous shade of pink Pink to make the sheep wink, said Lynn. So in the end we won at a canter, into the sixth round again. All the teams must fear us, but the cup holders hardly ever win the following season. So can we be an exception, eh? Incidentally, this was the first game for Zerkov where he was truly first choice at left back, and because of Ash's misfortune, it's his spot for the rest of the season. He's a tricky, skillful player, but needs to stop being caught in possession. He's a top player, though. The great Gus Hiddink recommended him. So, Wolves next week. I'm still not convinced by our away performances. In fact, Wolves away next week could be another banana skin. I bloody hope not. Come on, you blue boys!